parenting pause coming to you a little late this week. If you're a regular listener, we had a power outage here in Colorado. And it's always fascinating to go through one of these outages. I haven't had one in a long time. And this one lasted a little bit longer than I'm used to, usually an hour or two. This one was almost 48 hours. And I just recognize how dependent I am on my technology to be able to talk with you. And so I'm really happy, happy to be back, a little bit late, but extremely grateful that I have this capacity to be able to share with you my insights, to share with you support, to trust yourself, to know yourself, and to um, really support you in parenting from your internal wisdom versus from any expert advice. Now, of course, people have advice, but if that advice is not based on their personal experience and it's just like, all children need this or all parents need to do this, question it. Just give yourself a chance to question. I always thought that all children need limits and boundaries. And I'm just kind of like, well, I don't live with all children. I live with my child. So how do I trust my inner authority, my inner autonomy to recognize in my wisdom in my relationship with my daughter. And I find this to be very, very challenging for most of us to do because especially when things get uncomfortable inside, we often look outside for answers. Now, again, it's it's perfectly fine, I found for myself, is to look outside for um, suggestions, for uh, support. But anytime someone usually they weren't a parent <laughs> that had lots of really good advice for me, like tell your daughter she can't hit you. And I would look right at them and I would say, but she just did hit me. I mean, what do you mean tell her that she can't? Like all these things started not making sense to me, what people were telling me. And I was like, well, maybe when I went into my inner resource and my inner wisdom, I began to recognize maybe her hitting was a symptom of something deeper inside. Maybe there was a root cause that you know, um, drove that behavior because my daughter did not just walk around hitting me. As much as I always wanted to think that when I was in a stressed place or when I was in a um, triggered place, she didn't. So I began to look deeper than what people were just telling me. Children shouldn't hit, that, that would be a big one but my daughter just did hit. So I wanted to understand, well, what was the root of her hitting? And what I found was like really challenging to my conditioning. My daughter hit because she was feeling threatened by an action that I had taken toward her. Now, again, I, I speak to folks, you know, that might've been just asking her to brush her teeth or to go outside and play. I mean, it could have been something so benign in my adult mind, but in the child mind, when I really started going deeper into how she saw the situation, I could understand how her brain, and it was her brain, perceived my actions toward her as a threat. So if she was physically in danger, I would want my daughter to be able to hit. I would want her to hit. So I recognized if I took away the symptom or if I um, punished the symptom or tried to stop her from hitting, and of course I didn't want her to hit me, but if I focused on the hitting, instead of focusing on the root of what was driving that hitting, I wasn't actually attending to what was really important. So I wanna support you this week to, if you have a child who's doing some behaviors that you're trying to get to stop, just take a moment and see if you can ignore the behavior for a moment, just so you can have a deeper view into when do they do those behaviors? What's happening right before those behaviors? How might your child perceive what you're doing as an, a, it could be as a physical threat or an emotional threat? Just see if you can step back enough before you just try to tend to the symptom because if you just do that, you're just kind of repressing. A uh, teacher of mine had a, um, 
a great metaphor. You know, when you go out and you just pull the weeds and you just cut off the tops, but you don't pull out the root. It looks really good at first. The same thing with the behavior. It looks really good, but then those roots are down there. So the weeds keep coming up. So if you're really working with behavior this week, some behaviors that are difficult for you and challenging, go back and listen to those questions I just asked and really see if you can find out. And if you can't see it in your child, look at it in yourself. If, there, if there's a behavior that you are questioning inside yourself, see if you're willing to find the vulnerable root that drives that behavior because that root will drive different behaviors. You can get rid of one behavior, but it'll show up in different ways. So in pure joy, we're always going down into the root. All right. Have a wonderful week this week, and I'll see you next week on Parenting Paused.